हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक टू योर ओन यूट्यूब चैनल विजन केयर एडवाइजर फ्रेंड्स टूडे टॉपिक इज मार्क ऑफ गन पीपल और रिलेटिव अफरेंट पीपिलरी डिफेक्ट आई हैव गिवन द लिंक इन डिस्क्रिप्शन इफ यू वांट टू सी दिस टॉपिक इन हिंदी आल्सो सो लेट्स नो व्हाट इज आर ए पी डी फ्रेंड्स आर ए पी डी यानी के रिलेटिव अफरेंट पीपिलरी डिफेक्ट सो आर ए पी डी इज आल्सो नोन एज मार्कस गन पीपल एंड इट इज कॉज बाय an incomplete optic nerve lesion or severe retinal disease importantly it is never caused by a dense cataract if we are talking about how it appears in a clinical setting then clinical presentation is similar to an amorotic pupil but more subtle in rapd the pupil shows a weak response when the affected eye is stimulated while the normal eye has a quick response when the normal eye is stimulated so friends the swinging flashlight test is a very simple test that helps to highlight the difference between parallel and rapd friends full form of p e r r l a is pupils equal round rect due to light and accommodation it means if there is a pupil which has equal in size round and when is shown the light and there will be constriction and accommodation that means it is a normal pupil clinically we can mention it as p e r r l a parallel so friends let's see the procedure of swinging flashlight test Firstly, switch off the light because dim light is preferable, and give the target of Snellen chart to the patient. Make sure you do not stand in front of the patient, as their people will accommodate to focus on you. Now, shine the toss light into one eye at a time, and the normal response would be constriction of both the eyes. Then. slowly move the torch at nose to observe the both eye pupil size and shape etc now come to know the light reflexes so friends there are two types of light reflexes one is direct light reflex and another is consensual light reflex direct light reflex occurs when shining a torch light on one eye causes the pupil to constrict in the same eye and consensual light reflex occurs when shining a light on one eye causes the pupil to constrict on the other eye now friends if we are talking about how direct and consensual light reflexes are related to each other and they react very quick when you shine the torch light on the pupil so there are light reflex pathway which has two types one is afferent visual pathway and another is efferent visual pathway so afferent visual pathway starting from the retinal rods and cones and take the information to the bipolar cells from bipolar cells it goes to the ganglion cells then optic nerve and the optic nerve carry forward the information to the optic chiasm and from optic chiasm to anterior two third of the optic tract so friends in our visual pathway our visual senses are goes towards the lateral geniculate body but here the pupillary light reflex fibers does not goes towards the lateral geniculate body but these pupillary light reflex fibers are goes to a different nucleus that is called pretectal nucleus now from pretectal nucleus we have edinger westphal nucleus of both sides so the edinger westphal nucleus is a nucleus of the midbrain and from here the efferent visual pathway is started till sphincter pupillary muscles now let's see the pathway from edinger westphal nucleus till sphincter pupillary muscles so friends from the innervation means now signals are traveling from the pretectal nucleus to the edinger westphal nucleus on both sides 
So, between pretectal nucleus and eringovespal nucleus, there is an internuncial neurons. So, friends, these internuncial neurons connect each pretectal nucleus to both eringovespal nuclei. How it connects to each other? Actually, when a signal originates in pretectal nucleus, the internuncial neurons facilitate the transmission of that signal to both eringovespal nuclei allowing communication and coordination between these structures on both sides of the brain. This connectivity ensures that information related to pupillary responses is appropriately conveyed and processed. Now friends, pretectal nucleus is going to Edinger Vespal on the same side through the pre-aqueductal gray and pretectal nucleus is also going on the opposite side through posterior commissure. Now friends, from Edinger Vespal nucleus to the third nerve and the third nerve innervates to the inferior oblique and from inferior oblique the innervation goes to the ciliary ganglion. Now from ciliary ganglion to the short ciliary nerves and finally the short ciliary nerves go to innervate the sphincter pupillary muscle in the iris and hence pupil will constrict. Now friends, there is a mnemonic to remember the pathway from pretectal nucleus to the sphincter pupillary muscle. So the mnemonic is pi and ticks. P-I-E means pretectal nucleus, internuncial nucleus, adding a vespal nucleus. Ticks means third nerve, inferior oblique muscle, ciliary ganglion and short ciliary nerves. So friends, in this there is one liner important note. Please note it. First, optic nerve is the afferent nerve for the visual pathway. Second, third nerve is the efferent nerve for the visual pathway. So friends, now come to the topic of RAPD or Marcus gun pupil. In RAPD or Marcus gun pupil, it looks normal but when torch light on the affected eye causes dilation instead of constriction which is called paradoxical dilation. Paradoxical dilation phenomenon is observed when there is any retinal problem or optic nerve information is not transmitted. For example, there is a problem in the left optic nerve and if you shine a torch light source is directed toward the healthy or unaffected eye so the results are both people will be constricted but when you shine a torch light is directed to a diseased eye with an optic nerve lesion or several retinal disease the stimulus for constriction is reduced and both pupils dilate rather than constrict this unexpected dilation in response to the light stimulation is called a relative afferent pupillary defect. It indicates a dysfunction in the afferent yani ke, sensory pathway of pupillary light reflection. So friends, when you move the torch light from one eye to another eye, this test is called swinging flashlight test. So we have to observe the pupillary responses in both eyes during the rapid alternation of the light source. The swinging flashlight test is used to diagnose RAPD where a light is moved between both eyes and abnormal dilation during the test suggested that there has an optic nerve problem. I hope this video would be helpful for you. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more informative videos.